Hello, everybody. Today is May 26, and we're doing business, robot, and I think, what, like one or two design stories? One design story. One design story. A lone Android redesign Singular. story. <laughs> well, it's, that's, a, that's a mammoth redesign, though. There's so much to unpack there. There's a lot of screenshots, Chris, to prepare yourself. Ooh. Now, imagine, if you will, that you accomplished something really, really impressive, amazingly impressive, and yeah, you were just waiting, and you're like, oh, I'm going to tell the world about it. And the day comes and you tell the world and you're just riding high for one week. <laughs> for one week. And then somebody comes along and they're like, yeah, we did something 100% better. <laughs> Taiwan's TSMC claims breakthrough on one nanometer chips. Research project with MIT and NTU, that's the uh, National Taiwanese University, to help Im uh, improve the efficiency of future semiconductors. Now, they're probably five to ten years off from being able to use this. Maybe not. But they're using bismuth. The secret was bismuth as uh, one of the conductors of the uh, the leg there. Now I can't help but think, I think it's you know, bismuth isn't it? Or, well, I is it bismuth? Bismuth. Yeah. bismuth. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm from. I thought I was going crazy for a second. I was like, is that? No, you're you're probably right. But you know, the old mine workers called it bismuth because insane. But that's fine. Um, MIT, Lisa Sue is an alum from MIT and the TSMC I feel like that there's a connection there it's like MIT and TSMC you need to figure this out and get it done for world leadership <laughs> you know, I think all that money that the companies throw around mean a lot more yeah. than your old alumni ties mm. you think she was a sorority girl at MIT <laughs> do they have sororities at MIT yeah they do they're probably academic they have football teams at MIT one of the my calculus teacher his son played football for MIT. <laughs> and he said that the, when the coach got him out on the field for the first time, he just shook his head and said, take your watches off. <laughs> they were all wearing watches. <laughs> Probably like the calculator watches too. Probably, yeah. And TSMC, that is not the only thing they're doing. Obviously, they're the prettiest girl at the ball right now. <laughs> and they're making hay while the sun shines. I don't know if this will ever be, you know, it'll ever make them money. But it's certainly going to gain them points, and it's going to lock them in for those delicious Biden dollars. Yeah. TSMC is considering a 3 nanometer foundry in Arizona. Now, they've already planned a 5 nanometer facility. This is an additional second 3 nanometer facility. And I think with uh, things heating up over in that part of the world that uh, we could definitely do with uh, some, some facilities in Arizona, preferably in a geologically and uh, climatologically very stable effort uh, area of... Uh, of Arizona. Texas Isn't is just right out. Arizona, though? Because Arizona's also going through a major drought right now. I mean, drought's fine. We can deal with drought. It's just whatever happened in Texas that's tough to deal with. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of water that goes into that process. We can pipeline that in. We're good at pipelines. From California? <laughs> major problem, yeah. Just empty out the Hoover Dam. We need more chips. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fine. It should be in the eastern part of the country. It doesn't make sense to put it in Arizona. I think this is the most geologically stable. Is this engagement challenge is is uh you know uh like the ohio kentucky river valley the most geologically stable area of the eastern part of the u.s and if not huh. what is that's well, certainly gotta got to be the new madrid fault line and we've got uh sinkholes here in kentucky yeah so, but right? i mean the california coast it's got to be way worse right it's got to be yeah it's way worse ring of fire well cryptocurrency has taken a huge hit but i don't think it slowed down the miners at all because you can still make a lot of money at these prices. Yeah. And NVIDIA is trying to do something, and you might be thinking, hey, didn't they already do this? Yeah, but they screwed it up really badly. <laughs> and they're hoping that this time around, now with the with the, the leaked driver, couldn't you figure this out on these? No, because this is another new stepping of the silicon. Okay. So, so how long before they screw this one up? NVIDIA is nerfing new RTX 3080 and 3070 cards for Ethereum cryptocurrency mining. They're going to be labeled as light hash rate. So maybe gamers will be able to buy GPUs. However, yeah. as we pointed out last time, just Ethereum. So you could still mine something else and convert it to Ethereum. Easily. Very easily. But don't. Just don't do it. And... We have the big TSMC thing. Everything is about the fabs now. Who's making your chips and can they make them quickly enough? And Apple are looking like some sort of amazing oracles because they took the steps to free themselves and they're continuing on that path. 
Bloomberg reports that Apple is readying new MacBook Pros with the successor to the M1. Woo! Could be up to 64 gigabytes of memory. There's a lot of rumor and speculation here. Was this the one that was going to be 40 cores? Uh, no, that's the Mac Pro. Oh, okay. Um, I, rumor has it that uh, some of these machines are meant for like the developer workflow, and so we might see these at WWDC. I kind of doubt that though, because they've never they usually never release hardware at WWDC. But really, the only people that are clamoring for even more powerful MacBook Airs are like video editors and programmers. I bet they'll be really cheap. Like five grand, probably. <laughs> That's cheap yeah. for Apple, I guess. With the chip shortage, I bet they tack another grand on yeah, that. Yeah, easily. easily. Yeah. And Apple, of course, they're embroiled in this lawsuit, and we're learning so <laughs> much. Week. It's just, it's just a, a fire hose of information, and all of it is bad. They're a terrible company. And uh, when they're trying to defend themselves, they kind of have to go into things that it's like, well, yeah, obviously you didn't do that. <laughs> I like the judge, though, because the judge is like, what was your motivation behind this? And they have to answer, and it's like, aha, I knew it. I knew that was your long-term plan. <laughs> They're saying, listen, yeah, we burned down the orphanage, but we didn't set fire to the individual children. <laughs> We're not monsters. Come on. Apple wants you to know it chose not to take a cut of the $400 billion in physical goods that passed through app store apps so what they're talking about oh and they spent 50 million on the worldwide developers conference which is their developer event thing. 50 million yeah. <laughs> compared to their revenue <laughs> but judge just listen we do spend a lot of money on our developers no they don't um the reason that they said that they didn't take a cut is because they couldn't ensure delivery of the physical goods whereas they can with digital goods which seems like the biggest you know horse pucky answer ever well in the beginning we had netflix and then Netflix was like, not there. And then they, you know. It's, uh. But it also proves that there was heavy discussion about this. Yeah. And not everybody on the team had the same idea of, no, we can't do that. Yeah. It was clearly somebody who was like, hey, there's money on the table. Let's get it. And maybe it'll happen in the future. What <laughs> happens if they figure out a way that they can confirm the delivery? Yeah. Apple is very, very hostile to its customers and is very effective at shifting any resulting hostility from that toward the other people that are involved in the transaction or facebook yeah or whoever they are good at that they're good at a lot of things most of them are bad for society and this one i guess probably wouldn't be too bad for society although we might find out like three years down the road that destroys your eyesight <laughs> i don't know apple has developed a way to deliver true 3d content on device displays without requiring the use of 3d glasses so it splits the display in half, potentially, and you can have a left half and a right half. And because of that, you can create sort of a faux stereoscopic, you know, you're looking through the phone. And there's some interesting stuff in the patent. I don't think we'll ever see this in an Apple device because Apple doesn't believe in doing anything that's even a little bit janky. And they still think touch screens are janky. So they're not, they're like, we don't want to touch touch screens. Hmm. Touch screens can be janky. And do we need... 3D, we don't need that. Remember 3D TV? Oh yeah, that was supposed to be the next big thing. Yeah. Here we yeah. are. It wasn't. I would like to have a really lightweight heads up VR headset. That would be nice. Because then I could have big displays no matter where I am. But you don't need that to be 3D. No. Well, we've already talked about this. And uh, you know, definitely this weighed on a lot of people's week, I bet. Yeah. A lot of sadness. <laughs> Bitcoin Ethereum prices drop after China reiterates the ban on crypto services. Digital wallets across the globe took a hit Wednesday. I have unconfirmed reports that there were raids on mining operations to shut them down. And so that might mean that there are uh, GPUs that are about to flood the market. But that's been real hush-hush. I don't know if that's true or not. How does the Chinese government liquidate GPUs onto the market? What method do they go through for that? Probably somewhere through, you know, just gray market suppliers like usual. Mm. I mean, they don't have any trouble unloading kidneys. <laughs> well, it's a different <laughs> market. Is it? I mean, I mean yeah. It's not, it's not as optional. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, could, I think I could stretch my 1080 for another two, three years. <laughs> but if I need a kidney, I need it right now. I guess I do have an extra one. And uh, <clears throat> more fallout from the Epic case. Epic just continues to roll out more and more things that they say Apple is doing that are horrible. And Apple does a lot of horrible things. There's a lot of fodder here. 
Uh, Epic is hauling out more evidence in the trial to show that Apple behaves anti-competitively, not just with the App Store. And I gotta say, there's a lot of good evidence there to do with like how they develop peripherals, how they deal with stuff on the Mac side, how they deal with all of that stuff. In fact, in this court case, if you if you connect the dots, the very next dot is that Apple wants to control Mac computers exactly the same way that they control phones and tablets. They want it to be locked down. They don't want you to be able to get software from anywhere other than the App Store. And they want to make that out to be in the name of security, no matter what. And we're going to talk more about that in the security section. But it's also yeah. anti-competitive if you behave that way as well, because that's literally the desktop computer. And if that's the direction they're headed with the desktop computer, Lord help us all. It is a weird argument, though. Oh, it's not a weird argument, but it is a bad argument maybe in the sense that just because Apple is that bad doesn't mean that Epic is good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll see. We're, that, that case is going to go on for a long time, and it's going to reveal a lot of nasty stuff. Yeah. It's, a, it's amazing. You can tell the, how high the stakes are in that case because they're willing to let all this come out yeah. rather than just be yeah. like, all right, fine. Do what you want. And the movies are theaters open at this point. I think they are, are right. Yeah, I don't. I'm certainly not thinking about it. Nope. I'm loving the immediate releases, yep. so I can sit at home in comfort. But I guess not everybody wants that. And one man who has a lot of money and a lot of foresight apparently thinks it's coming back. Amazon said to make a nine billion dollar offer for Metro Goldwyn Mayer, the production studio, MGM. Isn't that the one that they made fun of in Arrested Development a lot? I don't remember. I think so, maybe. It was the Netflix. Uh, I remember Ron Howard. Oh, I've never seen the second iteration of it. Mm. I should watch that. But yeah, uh, they kind of list some of the IP that they will get down here. Stargate. The Hobbit. Four Weddings at a Funeral. Silence of the Lambs. Oh, was Lord of the Rings uh, MGM? No, I think The Hobbit was, though. Which The Hobbit movies were not very good. Maybe they'll remake them. Who owns The Lord of the Rings? Uh, New Line, I think, still. Mm, okay. So we'll see. Uh, one good thing about this is it might... We might start... These giant media mergers might start merging our streaming services together. Oh, yeah. But then again, maybe not. They might think they can earn them more money and just keeping them where they are. Yeah. Or they'll just, you know, they all combine into one giant monopoly and then they can charge whatever they want. Well, I will say, yeah, definitely. I mean, they would raise the prices. But I will say that uh, when it comes to streaming services, I'm, I'm off all of them, except for Amazon, because, you know, Prime, you get it for free. But one that I'm actually thinking about picking up, just because it's the king of let this run in the background while I do something else, and that's Discovery Plus. There's a lot of oh, fodder yeah. there. So... God forbid, maybe I'll end up as an AT&T customer. <laughs> AT&T to merge assets with Discovery. Discovery rides in out of nowhere and saves AT&T's butt. AT&T maybe. shareholders should be really happy because they were, they, were, they were holding a hot potato. A nuclear potato. <laughs> and now someone else is holding that potato. Well, now the shareholders get a 70% stake in the new thing. Yeah. So they will still have those. If they're smart, maybe they'll get rid of them. But we'll see. See if Discovery can make lemonade there. I don't know. I kind of doubt it. We'll see. Well, I don't know about you, but one thing in this past year and it has been a year and a quarter, year and a half, uh, the, I've, every day I wake up and I'm like, God, I wish I could go into a conference room, <laughs> have a quick conference. I really miss that experience. I miss it so much. I miss all the little nuances of it. And Zoom says, we've got you, fam. Zoom events will try to recreate the in-person conference experience, selling tickets, tracking attendance, and hosting informal chats. Uh, uh, they're, Just they're actually, my mouth a little bit. Yeah, this <laughs> there's a lot of pieces of software that have popped up in, to try to deal with this, and it's just not, it's not great. Yeah, I don't think you're ever going to replace that. You know what's been really nice, though, is like a lot of the people that are like, oh, we struggle to work remotely and we can't blah, 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 have been forced to admit that their organizational skills are awful. And it's like, okay, now they're getting the hang of working remotely and working in a group and doing things online. And it's like, you know, you say that you want us to be available for instant messaging 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But really, if it's just like, all right, Thursday morning 
from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. We will be working as a group, but everybody can be online, you know, in all their different places. Like, that's just collectively the time that we're going to work on these tasks on the Kanban board to get them done. And they're like, oh, that works great. And I was like, yeah, that's what we've been doing since the beginning of time. We just, you wouldn't listen. And in some cases, you're having less meetings. Yeah. Which is just staggering. (laughs) What? It's like, you were right all along, all these years. We didn't have to, you know, be a slave to our horrible, horrible processes. We should have just listened to you. And it's like, yeah. Except they never say it that way. (laughs) They never say you were right. They're just like, wow, I never knew we could do this. And it's like, uh, okay. And I guess some people are still struggling with this whole, like, interacting with a 2D group. I don't know why, but some people want that in-person experience. And Google has created something that is definitely not that, but maybe it'll. Maybe this is the artificial sweetener of human contact. Google's Project Starline Video Conference Tech wants to turn you into a hologram. Our reporter tests a video booth uh, to glimpse the future of telepresence. So Google's gotten this all wrong. What they need to do is the deep fake thing. Like I need to roll out of bed and not even be wearing clothes or anything and hit a button, have a filter and have like, you know, me wearing a suit with the background of like a high rise, high rise Manhattan apartment. And then it's like, yeah, hello, I'm ready. I'm here. And you know, I've got the, got, I've got all the stuff going for the video. That's what they need to do. Not this. And then your display driver crashes yeah. and you're naked suddenly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like this, just chest hair. And just, yeah, you got just, bags under your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you're smoking a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Sorry. My filter's off. Click. <laughs> oh, now I'm a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Apple stores are all back, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, none of us really ever go. To I think them. I read that they were still uh, the requiring masks despite mm. the CDC. So I think they are open, but their closest competitor, at least in that space, I would say, has always resisted permanent physical locations <laughs> until now. First physical store that Google is opening is in New York City, and they're opening it this summer. All right, engagement challenge: How long until they close again? I'm going to say 18 months. Are you saying that because it will be a failure because nobody cares about a physical Google store? I think that Google has in mind to create a physical store because they think most people, like they've come so far that most people don't understand their Google products and the ecosystem of how all the Google products fit together. Like Google Nest and Home and Android and Android TV. They don't understand how good of an experience you can have with those products. What they really don't understand is that the experience and the Chromebook and all that kind of stuff. What they really don't understand, though, is that the experience with those products is trash. It's bad. It's very, very bad. And if you drink the Kool-Aid and learn to jump through the hoops, it can be a good experience. But the experience is so far removed one from what an average consumer expects, no one is ever going to learn to use it. And that's why it's going to fail. Mark your calendars. Six months from today. No, 18 months. No, he's oh, asked sorry, the 18, 18. That's a long bit. Well, we saw this yesterday, just a, a quick glimpse of it with the commander in chief at the wheel, but it's coming and you can have one and they're somewhat reasonable in price. Ford unveils the F-150 Lightning. It's all electric pickup truck that will start at uh, under $40,000. It's like thirty eight five, but that's for basically just a motor and some wheels. Which is what I want in a truck. That's exactly what I'm looking for in a truck. Not a great range, though. 200 miles. Yeah, I'm not looking for long range in a pickup. If you get all the options, it's 78000 Shoo. Like cruise control. <laughs> but pickup trucks are expensive. Yeah. I mean, you can go a big V8. You can really, I don't think you'd go that high, but you will definitely start to add on to the dollars very quickly. Mm. And uh, one interesting thing they did here, if you're thinking, well, that doesn't look much different than the old F-150, they purposely did that because there's a, a horde of aftermarket parts and they wanted to make sure that you could use all of them on the new electric one, which is nice. That's a nice bit of foresight. I think that Ford will probably have a lot of fans that adopt this as a result of that and the fact that it's Ford. I don't think I'd get the first year one, though. <laughs> They're going to figure a lot out during this year. Think, uh, what do you think the over-under is on there being catastrophic problems with the battery? Oh, well, I mean... I, I can't imagine, as much as I dislike Tesla, I can't imagine that Tesla is so bad that they're the only ones to have those kinds of problems. <laughs> Everybody's going to have them, right? 
And I think oh, Tesla has actually done good on the whole with their battery technology as compared with some of the other companies that we've heard about. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So for sure, they're going to have problems. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that whole 12 volt that runs the deep battery, yeah, yeah. everybody has that problem. Yeah. And they all got it wrong, which is amazing. Well, IRC, man, I miss IRC. Yeah. IRC was a great place. <laughs> Remember when IRC was slack? <laughs> I was thinking before then. But uh, it was a really cool thing, and you could go on there, and you could sort of... It was still... It was a place on the internet that normies didn't go. And eventually, it just kind of died out. I mean, you know, there's still hardcore people there, but even I got too normie to go to it. <laughs> and, but it just makes me sad to see this. Freenode IRC staff quit after a new owner ceases control of the network. So this is a really, really bizarre story. Like I tried to figure this out and I was like, surely it wasn't like this, but someone owns the domain names, but they didn't, they didn't do anything with them. And then they didn't do anything with the company either. Like you have to file paperwork with the company and secretary of state and all of the, the volunteers were free and they didn't do any of that. And then they were like, wait a minute, I own this. And so then they like were trying to seize control by seizing control of the domain names and the infrastructure, but it's all run by volunteers. So it's definitely a huge mess. And it seems like that it's been replaced and it won't be called Freenode because the company that owns Freenode actually doesn't have anything to do with IRC. Like the Freenode name is a corporation. It's just, it's very, it's a very odd situation. And every, all the people that worked on it are gone. So it's definitely done. Libera.chat is where they went weird I'm sure the that article was just scraping the surface yeah on the insanity they all made very incendiary statements yeah. including the guy that's taking over yeah now imagine that you live in australia and we know we know that australia has one of the worst internet setups in the world literally just trash it's god awful and every time we talk about how bad ours is we get in the comments. It's like, oh, oh, you don't even know. You have no idea. And much like everything else in Australia, it's trying to kill you, too. That's the thing about it. It's not just that it's bad. It's trying to kill you. NBN replaces 10,000 modems after lightning fries devices across the Blue Mountains. One family said blue sparks were flying from their modem as electrical storms wreaked havoc on the fiber-to-the-curb distribution boxes. So they apparently cheaped out on the routers. Use some parts that might not be hardened. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> They've had to replace half of them. Man, that's crazy. Ooh. They claim that the next one is more robust against that type of thing. I guess the Blue Mountains, are uh, they have some really intense electrical storms, which is another thing in Australia that's trying to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> if only they had planned for that when they originally you know, set up this infrastructure. Uh, exactly. Now, I put this in here. This almost got caught in my battery filter <laughs> yeah because I, I was great until the very end of the story and it was like 10 years away yeah uh, uh, it's going in the trash bin but it does sound amazing i my like where my mind goes with this is like if i had a bunch of those i could get through the entire apocalypse maybe <laughs> maybe it would never wear out my hills i don't know how does Mall, that i would I say know. they have a cheap and highly effective new electric motor and it uses no magnets so it still uses a magnetic field. It just uses stationary coils on the rotor that uh, get an in, in induced magnetic field. And so uh, you would think that wouldn't be super efficient, but the problem is with fixed permanent magnet motors, they're most efficient at a certain RPM. With this, it's actually efficient across the whole range. Now, if you lost power suddenly at a high RPM there, would you be risking catastrophic failure? I guess the magnetic field would still remain in place until it slowed down enough. Yeah, I think that if the mechanism were built such that uh, if, it, if you had some kind of catastrophic failure with the rest of the powertrain, the motor could be built such that you would still get the induced electromagnetic field to just slow itself down like braking. We'll see. Probably not. We'll probably never see. <laughs> Sorry. All right, Krista, it's your time to shine. Are you ready? I'm ready. We have so many screenshots. And, there are a uh, lot of screens. There's also some animation demos in this video down here. What I'm going to do, Krista, is uh, I'm going to have you read the headline, and then I'm going to tell you when I'm clicking to go through the slideshow, and then you can comment on each one. How's that sound? Okay. Google shows off Android 12's huge UI overhaul. 
Woo. Okay, we got the home screen here. So I was reading this. Apparently, this change is based on like the colors in your photo, which I think is kind of cool. I wonder if you can set that manually. Are they going for contrast or are they going for what matches it best? That's, I, I'm not sure how they pick it up. So like there's a picture of the kid here eating like the apple or whatever, and they've got a yellow sweater and it pulled the yellow from the sweater. I think as well, it's hard to say for certain. It looks like they probably put like a, maybe a 20% like gray cast over the photo too to make it easier to see your information on top of it. All right, so it sounds like you're positive about the new home screen. Yeah, I kind of like it. I like the, the big graphic look. All right, let's take a look at these notifications. I don't like this as well. I don't like the 50-50 split because if you yeah. need to put more information in there, as some apps will need to, like it's going to get cut off. Fablets are coming. And how often am I just trying to get my two-factor code from that message? <laughs> and that's going to cut it off, and that's going to be miserable. And then and you have think, to click it, and it's, it's, it just makes you have to interact with it more, which is probably a net plus for the people who make the phone, but kind of annoying as the user. Okay, now we have a themed color for the entire UI. I like that. I think that's really cool. Again, I'm wondering if you can set that yourself or if you... Like once you set your desktop, if it'll just choose it for you. I mean, it seems to be pulling that green color from the background, right? Yeah. Well, and it looks like this this slide confirms what I thought, where it's got like the gray cast over the home screen. Because right. if you look at the desktop image, it's definitely brighter. This one doesn't really show us anything new. Just some notifications on the home screen. Yeah. Well, did you see that they uh, they added the uh, elastic like pull to thing like Apple does because the patent has expired? Oh no, I didn't see that. I'm not seeing a lot more that are different. I guess the, the one that's just showing the, uh, well, that's just more notifications. Yeah. Here's a close up of the notifications. <laughs> My home, six devices. Again, this is exhibit A and Google doesn't understand what people actually want. Well, yeah, then of course this is an example where they're like, this is only, you know, use cases where I have a tiny little bit of text in the notification, which is not <laughs> always going to be the case when you're dealing with a complex system like this. You know when that's super convenient, though, is when you forget to lock your phone and you're cheating on your spouse. Because <laughs> there's not enough text for them to be like, well, that could be, but nah, probably not. Yeah, I quite like this. I think overall it looks pretty good. I mean, obviously, like we'll probably see more of it soon, but pretty. Looks good. Mm -hmm. Well, moving on to robot. That was our design section. <laughs> Sorry. One story. I don't know where to find design stories, and Krista doesn't submit them. So I, don't blame me. I used to find them primarily from like one or two websites, but both of them gone to a pay only model recently. Oh, so. It's the darkest. Yeah, it's hard there, to man. find like stories that have enough screenshots to warrant actually using them because otherwise it's like, here's one screenshot, and it's like, well, there's not really a lot to talk about there. They ought to embed cryptocurrency stuff for web browsing because that'd be a great use case for it. It's like, here, I have a a few, you know, hundred thousandths of a Bitcoin to give me five days of access to this website. Okay, click. Yeah, but the transfer fees. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the transfer fees should be almost zero in that case, but they're ne they never are. Yeah, that's the problem with it. Well, let's talk about a first. First pictures, not the first to do it. U.S. number one. <laughs> <laughs> Behold, China unveils the first Mars photos from the Zurong rover. This is from the Long March rocket that we reported on a while back. And um, yeah, it made it and it landed successfully and uh, it's deployed and look at that. Good job. I mean, didn't it take us a few tries even though we were number yeah. one? Yeah, but they're standing on the shoulders of giants here. Come on. Yeah. They come over and slash the tires on our rover. <laughs> uh, well, here's a question for you. How many helicopters does theirs have? <laughs> Zero. Zero. <laughs> yeah. That is super cool though. I mean, I'd say let's. We should shoot for every country on Earth having a rover on Mars. Yeah. We should blanket the planet with rovers. Let's do it. And then we'll have when they start getting down to end of life, we'll do like uh, battle bots type of thing. How much does it cost to launch a satellite with SpaceX? What if we it's, could launch a satellite and then pilot it to the moon? Well, a satellite is considerably different than a giant rover. Yeah, yeah. the weight there is what's going to get you. And that's a great lead in. 
because it is hard to launch rockets. I mean, we're looking at Musk doing it, and he's making it look easy. You got to admit. I mean, he's out there like every Wednesday, he's putting like 50 million satellites it, in space. They don't even blow up anymore. Yeah, he's like, oh, whatever. Yeah, we're, I don't even think about that anymore. <laughs> That's like my grocery delivery. It just happens. I don't even, but it's hard to do. Not everybody can do it easily. Rocket Lab loses two satellites, but still aims to recover a rocket. The first stage of the company's electron rocket may fly again one day, but its payload was lost. How tough a day are you having there if those were your satellites? Yeah, very sad. You probably had an insurance policy for it, though. Yeah, but you got to prep Rebuild another the chip yeah, shortage. Stressing. How easy does it get to get satellite parts right now? Then you got to phone up to Elon Musk and be like, have you got any extra room? On- <laughs> <laughs> I need some stuff. I need launched in space. He just makes you grovel. When you <laughs> Here is a great idea. Now, a lot of us aren't struggling with parking right now, but... When that day comes, well, I know I'm going to be struggling with parking. We have a parking problem here. And if we had something like this, at least when you were on your way to work, you would know how bad the situation was going to be before you got there. Sidewalk Labs launches Pebble, a sensor that uses real-time data to manage city parking. So you can see here it knows the layout of the parking lot and it knows where the empty spots are. And the car icons are comically small compared to reality. But look, it can see there's two empty parking spots. The other thing this is going to allow them to do is to know how long you were parked there without a meter made. Yeah. Or a meter of any kind, actually. Yeah. So which is going to be a nice thing if you own land on which to park vehicles. Or if you count on that revenue to fund your government. It's going to be a bad thing if you have a car to park somewhere. <laughs> or if you're the chalk guy. Chalk <laughs> tires. You know, they're not using that anymore, Krista. They're using a new, fancier method now. Oh. Well, I think she's saying that guy's not going to have a job at all. Yeah. Yeah, he's obsolete. Yeah. He's replaced, literally replaced by robots. He can work at an Amazon warehouse. <laughs> For now. <laughs> Until he also gets replaced there. <laughs> They're working on it. Yeah. And we love to talk about uh, GPT-3 and that ilk type of thing. AI that just writes. You, you feed it a giant, giant volume of information. You go, go read all these books, look at everything, and then write me a story. And it's incredible what it can do. It's not perfect but it's really, really good. I'm pretty sure that there are Chinese companies using this on Amazon to write yes. item descriptions. Yeah. And they're not very good. But the better we get, the more industries it can move into. This AI tool writes real estate descriptions without ever stepping inside a home. So they, uh, this couple, I guess, used it. Like They had a realtor, but they also used this. And it wasn't the best description of the home, but it was uh, pretty darn good. So you can see there lovely like this is the ai deciding to put everything in caps and a space between them so it saw this somewhere and it was like "Ooh, that's used to good effect i'm stealing it yeah and they said that it got some stuff wrong like it would describe one room as having a certain kind of ceiling when in fact it was the room next to it that had that ceiling which yeah. is a weird mistake but still very impressive that it could suss that out of pictures yeah it might have just <laughs> been the way they submitted the pictures and it's Honestly, like, I've read some bad real estate copy when we were looking for houses, so I mean... <laughs> I never read the copy. A lot of really? the time, the realtors are not literate. Yeah, well, I found the copy to be so useless. Like, the <laughs> things that I needed to know about the house were in the data, not in the copy. The copy was always just fluff. I don't know, sometimes you could get... You could glean a little bit of information from it, like... Won't last long. <laughs> and then they've been on it for six months. <laughs> Uh, I too would glean information that was like the wrong kind of information. It's like, now it needs a little bit of maintenance. Delete. Yeah. <laughs> See, mine mentioned it was like, oh, there used to be horses on this land, but that wasn't mentioned anywhere in the data. It was just like something that they mentioned like you could do. Great starter home, meaning it's kind of garbage. <laughs> yeah. The idea of starter homes, America's messed up. Krista, uh, how many months have you been in your house at this point? Uh, Three. What's wow. your... We started in March. Or How are you feeling March. about it? I 100% would buy a house, not like any house, but I would buy this house again. I'm very happy. How it's much good. of that satisfaction rating is just from the pumpkins? Oh, it's it's high. It's, Chad, I've got a whole little pumpkin patch started with like five or six tiny little vines coming up. I got to go water it. Don't Don't invest in crypto. Just invest in pumpkin seeds. You'll be happier for it. That's not much, good, they're much right. easier to trade, too. The IRS is not going to look into your pumpkin seed purchases. No. Pro criminal tip. <laughs> All right, Krista. Give us a uh, 
gonna is a is a pumpkin a gourd? Yes. Give us a gourd goodbye. <laughs>